And today we have another contender in South Africa's best Baki series. If you haven't been keeping up, I have a playlist of some of South Africa's best Bucky's. There's still plenty more to come, so make sure you subscribe so that you know when I release future videos. But today we are focusing on the Isuzu D-Max V-Cross. So stick with me and I'll take you around the exterior, the interior, and how much this car costs. Welcome to another video. This particular model is the 4x4 V-Cross. It comes with a turbocharged 3-litre 4-cylinder diesel engine. All of that combined produces 140 kilowatts and 450 Nm meters of torque. It drives all of the wheels via a 6-speed automatic gearbox. This is made to rival the Legend RS and Wildtrek X. Let's take a closer look what Isuzu is bringing to the table. Starting with the front, Isuzu has its own distinctive look, which I really love. The aggressive headlamps blend well into the grille to give you more presence in the front. These then go well with your indicator signals and fog lamps. Moving around the side of the car, you have a fairly simple but beautiful design. This particular variant comes with 18-inch alloys, along with that, the V-Cross badging and your side skirts are standard. You have your 4x4 badging on the side, which personally, I'm not sure why manufacturers do it. Maybe you just let everyone know that it's a 4x4, but it's there nonetheless. So the style of Bucky's don't come with the iron roll bars, but they come with this plastic bar, which I'm not sure what it's for, except for just aesthetics. I mean, it looks nice. All of the other manufacturers are doing it as well. But personal preference is iron roll bars or a canopy. The back of the Isuzu is also distinctive from other manufacturers. In the back, the rear camera and parking sensors around the car come as standard. There's a whole lot of other features that are standard with this car. For example, lane keep assist, driver monitoring, a rear view camera, a front camera, cruise control, autonomous brake, and plenty more. But that's what you expect when you're paying that amount of money. I can't fault anything with the exterior, really. Everything looks mint. The inside is no exception to what Isuzu is already doing on the outside, which is simple and intuitive. The dashboard has its own look along with the infotainment system and the driver's cockpit. I do wish that it was all digital like on the Ford. So in the front you have your leather seats, leather steering, a 9 inch touchscreen that supports Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Everything is where it should be. The materials at the back are still the same as in front. I didn't feel like they were cutting costs at the back. Now the back passengers get air vents along with a USB port. Another plus is the center armrest that comes with two cup holders. The space for the back passengers and the front passengers was fairly decent. I was actually surprised by that part. With me being 7 foot, I thought I wouldn't fit in this car. You get a bunch of storage space in this car which I like. So anything you might have, there's a space to put it somewhere. Quick mention with the infotainment is that those are not capacitive buttons but are actual buttons which I do like and that's a plus. So obviously there's plenty to like about the car. Let's get to the price. This particular variant costs 880000 If you want to finance that over 72 months with no balloon, no deposit, you're looking at an installment of around 17000 with the current fuel prices, you'll need about 2,000 to fill up the 76 litre tank. Lastly would be your insurance, which is dependent on how much years you've been driving and if you have a clean record or not. So your total cost of ownership might hover around 20, 
1000 rand. As I always say in most of my car reviews, you can get it for way much cheaper on the secondhand car market. Or you can look down the range and see something that fits your description. Either way, that's been it. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. It's the only way we are going to grow. As per tradition, I want to leave you with one question. V-Cross, Legend RS, Wildtrek X, or the Amarok? Leave your comment below on which one you would pick. Until the next video, peace.